Hey. How are you guys out there? I'm a little sweaty today. It's getting hot. It's going to be a hot weekend out here in the desert. I hope that you enjoy some mild weather. I'm just looking around. See if there's anything interesting that I haven't uh, stashed away. I had some books I wanted to uh, to share, but uh, I doubt anyone cares. Anyway, I try to break out a few tunes in the interim. show my aunties in this episode? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just kind of frazzled. There's a book by Gilbert Hyatt called Talents and Geniuses. When was it written? It's a uh, Merid Meridian book. Meridian book. Meridian paperback. M seventy seven. Sounds like a like a grenade launcher. This is a new selection from the discussions of literature and other arts which I have been broadcasting during the past five years or so every Tuesday evening at 9.05 from station WQXR in New York City. I remember the QXR. I'm sure you New Yorkers. They play classical music and stuff. Anyway, I, I looked at a little bit of this. Talent and Geniuses by Gilbert Hyatt. Here's a Cliff Notes to Test the Ubervilles by Tom Hardy. Book 50. I guess it's a lot more now. Here's one. A Study in Symbolic Interaction by Samuel C. Heilman. This one's called Synagogue Life. The Sociology of Religion. What do you know? As part of their adherence to Halakha, Orthodox Jews observe the law against any travel other than by foot on Sabbaths and Holy Days. I remember that stuff. Maybe I have to walk everywhere for the High Holy Days. It's a tough read though. Synagogue Life. Anybody interested? Chicago University Press. I believe. Let's see what else we got here. Well, this is a famous book. Drunk Jr. and E.B. White's Elements of Style. With a forward by Roger Angel. That's the uh, baseball writer, I think. And that's for the New Yorker. Parentheses. A sentence containing an expression in parentheses is punctuated outside the last mark of 
parentheses exactly as if the parenthetical expression were absent. Quotation. We need to learn uh, elementary. Let's see. Use of the proper case of pronoun. Use a dash to set off an abrupt break or interruption and to announce a long, a positive, or summary. Do not break sentences in two. Good book. A good writer should memorize that stuff. And here's a famous little book. Harper's Index book. This is really old. Yeah, not that old. 1987, book 695. There are six square yards of park for every inhabitant in Paris. Is the type of information. This is the first edition. So they say. There's rubrics, nostrums, pastimes, facades, fads, freaks, and wonders. Let's see what's in freaks and wonders. Let's see. Freaks and wonders. Number of the five all-time highest grossing films that were made by Steven Spielberg. George Lucas or both? Five. At this writing, highest price paid for a cow at auction, 1.3 million. Greatest pumpkin ever grown in pounds, 671. I'm sure that that's been surpassed. The street corner of 59th and Lexington is the world's most crowded street corner. And the longest recorded flight by a chicken, 302 feet 8 inches. Good stuff. What else we got? We got a few more here. Writer's Resources. The Watson Guptill Guide to... Workshop, conferences, artist colonies, and academic programs. Nice gift. 1995, man. Let me show you inflation. Nice place. Key West Literary Seminar and Writers Workshops for playwrights, poets, nonfiction, and fiction writers. At the southern tip of Florida. Founded in 1983. I'd like to go to one of those things, man. I've been writing my ass off about the ponies for the last couple of years. Not that anybody. Well, maybe some people can fly for it. Here's the fifth edition of Acting Professionally. Nice book. 1595. Look at Look at Tyler Layton. He's pretty. That's a, uh, an appealing three-quarter shot of this young stage and television actress. Yeah, quite appealing. I know whatever the camera for, probably nothing. Television. She's been in Silk Stockings and uh, Brotherly Love. And she was a series lead in uh, Silk Stockings, or Silk Stockings. Let's see here. She's five foot six, 113, with blue eyes. Member of SAG. And she's uh, being represented by Gold Marshak Litke Associates. On West Olive Avenue, uh, oh, in Burbank, 3500 West Olive, right there where uh, the studios are, I think. Yes. Maybe 
Jay Leno would have noticed poor Tyler. Let's see here. Yeah, here's a good one. There's a little book. Little books are cool. I, I dig little books. I can't read big books anymore. I can't even read little books. This is the famous uh, Penguin 60s classics, the Gilgamesh and Kido. A stirring chronicle of heroic adventure and friendship. Miraculously preserved in clay tablets. The famous Babylonian epic of Gilgamesh from which this extract is taken dates from the 3rd millennium BC and is the finest surviving epic poem before Homer's Odyssey and the Iliad. Both mortal and God, Gilgamesh is superior to all men in looks and strength. He finds a companion in Enkidu and a firm friendship ensues. Enkidu's fate is sealed when their adventures incur the wrath of the gods. Man, and who, who doesn't incur the wrath of the gods? And Gilgamesh is left to contemplate the inevitability of death. It's truly an epic. Epic of the Gilgamesh. They made that into one of those uh, monster movies that Hollywood is so prone to make. The flying, flying ninja warriors. And here's a quick guide to the customs and etiquette of Panama. Panama in case anybody's trying to escape the New World Order and wants to hang out in the jungles south of Panama City. There is much casual racism in Panama, which has a vast cultural misc. misc. Historically, black people have had to fight for equal rights, and in the days of the canal construction saw disgraceful inequalities, such as whites being paid with gold and blacks with silver. That's an old story. But the President of the United States is a black man, and here's another black man, St. Augustine. Blacker than um, the Kembe Mutombo. The Confessions of St. Augustine, one of the true classics. And this edition here, the New American Library one, would have set you back. Uh, $3.95. Great book. St. Augustine. There was an occasion when my mother had brought, as was her custom in Africa, cakes and bread and wine to some of the chapels built in memory of the saints and was forbidden to do this by the doorkeeper. When she found that it was the bishop who had forbidden this practice, she accepted his ban so devoutly and so willingly that I myself was amazed to see how much more readily now she would condemn her own practice of the past than dispute the bishop's prohibition. Where are you going to find that kind of stuff? You know? Anyway, we'll be doing some music making. Mm -hmm. 